In this video, I'm going to give you an introduction to luminosity mask in Photoshop. I'll show you how to easily create as well as use luminosity math. Hello, I'm Charles. Welcome to the channel. If you're into Photoshop, Lightroom and photography, and even a little video editing, please consider subscribing and click that bell notification so that you're notified when we release brand new content every single week. Oh, and be sure to check the links in the description. I have a free Photoshop action download for you. This action will create luminosity masks for you so you don't have to recreate them every time you want to use them. So what are luminosity masks? Luminosity masks break an image down into various channels of luminosity. In other words, they allow you to make very specific selections in Photoshop based on how bright or dark the area is. Luminosity masks are a powerful way to edit images using the brightness values in the image itself which is a great way of essentially telling Photoshop specifically where you want to edit the image and get a precise selection that looks natural. So all this is done using channels in Photoshop. Channels allow you to temporarily save selections to use later. So you are creating selections based on the tonal value of the image. Luminosity masks have a subtle and soft transition. So we're going to start off by editing this image here. Luminosity masks are good for landscapes and here in this photo this is, happens quite a bit when you're trying to get a sunset and you have a sky that's brighter than the, the foreground. And this is a, a case where luminosity mask can help and it can isolate certain areas of this photo. I'm going to start off by showing you how to create luminosity mask manually. And then later on, I'll show you an automated way. So to create luminosity mask manually, you're going to use the channels panel. To start off, we're going to command or control and click on RGB. And we have marching ants all on the top part of this photo because it is the brightest part of the image. So we have the most or the brightest pixels selected here. And so just by holding the command and clicking on RGB, we have our selection and come down here to the save selection as channel. And we're going to call this highlights one. So now I'm going to show you how to use this luminosity mask. I'm going to click on my RGB and then go to my layers panel. And you can see my selection or my marching ants. And I'm going to choose a curves adjustment layer. And here with my curves adjustment layer, I have a mask that was my selection from highlights one. And I'm going to bring down the brightness and you can see it's just changing on the top part of the image. Or if I want to increase the brightness, it is again, just the top part because we made that selection for the highlights. So I'm going to pull this down a little bit just to make it less bright. I might add that I could have selected the, the sky only and used a curves adjustment layer, but the selection would not be the same as using luminosity mask and it wouldn't look as natural. Now I'm going to go back into channels. So now to get more selective, I'm going to intersect this highlights one luminosity mask with itself. And first I'm going to command and click, bring my marching ants up. In a Mac, it's Command Option Shift, or on PC, it's Control Alt Shift. So Command Option Shift and click on my highlights one, and you can see my marching ants changed. It selected a smaller area, and now I'm going to save this selection as a channel, and I'm going to rename this highlights two, and let's do this again. So with my marching ants showing or my selection showing. I'm going to hit my command option shift and click on my highlights too. So it intersected with itself and I'm going to save another channel and call this highlights three. And I'm going to deselect command D. So notice now when I select highlights one that most of the sky is white or really light. That's because it's selected. 
and if I go down to highlights too, you can see that less of my sky is selected by command click on there. You can see my marching ants are right above the top of the mountain here. The shadows got darker and the midtones got darker. So now if I go to my highlights three, you can see that my selection is honed in even more. So each time you create another luminosity mass, we are intersecting with the mask, which means the brightest areas stay bright and the middle area starts to get much darker and the darkest areas really get dark. So now let's click on the highlights to luminosity mask and command click on the mask and click on RGB and go in the layers panel. Now I'm going to create a new curves adjustment layer and that's got the selection or the mask from highlights two. And now I'm bringing down the curves adjustment layer further. So here the first curves adjustment layer is affecting most of the sky. Next curves adjustment layer is affecting less of the sky. And if I go back to channels, and I'm gonna select highlights three. Command click on highlights three to get the selection. Click on RGB, go back to my layers panel, create another curves adjustment layer and bring that down. And it, it is affecting even less and less. It's honing in specifically to a selection that we created in our channels panel. Let me show you another use for luminosity mask. If I go back into my layers panel and let's say this mask here I'm looking at that and maybe I want to change those colors of where that mask is affecting. So I'm going to bring in a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And I'm going to borrow this mask here. So I'm going to press alt or option and copy it over to this hue and saturation adjustment layer. And so I can change the hue and here I'm overdoing it. But if I wanted more pink in the sky, and I could change the, the saturation, and there's before and there's the after. So point being, you can make selective adjustments to the brightness, or you can make selective adjustments to the color. So I'm gonna create three more of these, and then we're gonna create the shadows, and I'll be back. Okay, so I've created six highlight luminosity masks. Now let's go and create the darks luminosity mask. So we're gonna start off by clicking on the highlights one, turning all these other ones off. So it's command or control click on the highlights one luminosity mask. So that brings up the selection, the marching ants. And now we're just gonna come up here to select inverse and we're going to save that and this is our first level of shadows we'll just call it darks one and after that as we did before on the highlights we intersect that mask with itself command option shift click on it and save it so that's our next one i'll call this darks two and same thing keep on going command option shift click save it there is our darks we'll rename this dark three each time we're doing this we're selecting a smaller portion of the dark pixels in the image getting more and more selective and we'll do this one more time command option shift click and now we're going to save this selection as a channel so okay how do we use this Let's look back at our image here and deselect everything. So this foreground here is pretty dark, needs to come up. And if I click through my darks luminosity mass, I can see which areas it's affecting the most. So this is going to affect some things in the sky, some of the darks in the sky, as well as the foreground. And if I just wanted to mainly effect the foreground i'm going to choose dark three just to see what happens so command click to 
to bring up my marching ants. Click on my RGB. Come over to my layers panel and let's bring up another curves adjustment layer. And see, I am bringing up the foreground and it really isn't affecting the sky that much, if any. But there is a start. Okay, I'm just gonna say darks three right there. Let's go back to the channels. What else can we do here? Let's see what darks four does. I'm gonna command click and I see all my marching ants down there. Click on RGB, come up to my layers panel and create a curves adjustment. And bring this up a little bit and I can see that some of the shadows in the back of this, these plants here came in. So that's how we will work with the shadows in an image like that. So now let's create the midtones. So, so far this is the before and this is the after. So now I want to show you how to create the midtones. And midtones are essentially everything that isn't light or dark. So we're going to select everything by hitting Command or Control A. And then we're going to subtract out our lights and darks to get the midtones. So to do that, we hit Command and Option on Mac or Control Option on PC and click on the highlights one and the darks one. So now we've taken out the lightest and the darkest areas and you'll see this warning here saying that nothing is selected more than 50%, just ignore that. Say okay. And you don't see the marching ads because nothing is over 50%, but the selection is still in place. So in this case, we're subtracting out the lights and darks. And now if we save this, and I am going to rename this midtones one. And this is what the first midtones luminosity mask looks like. So let's do a couple more. And if we want to keep on going and creating more midtones on this midtones one, select everything, command or control A, and then command option and click on highlights two and darks two and subtracting those out. And then we're going to save that selection. And this is midtones two. And I'll do this one more time. Again, select Pitones 2, Command or Control A, Command Option, and I'll click on Highlights 3 and Darks 3, and save that. Here's our Midtones 3. So how do we use Midtones? Well, one way, again, we can come down here and just kind of click through our Midtones and see what we like. Let's try Midtones 3. So I'm going to command or control and click on my midtones three, click on RGB, come back in my layers panel. And this time I'm going to use a levels adjustment. And if you're not sure how to use levels, I'll put a link in the description and you can look at that tutorial. So now we're on the midtones and we can kind of play with this and we're going to add a little bit of contrast here in our midtones. There's before and there's the after. Here is the before and after of the total image. So now let's show you how to automate this process. So now you know how to create luminosity masks from scratch. And it's okay to create one at a time depending on what your needs are. But there's another way and this is the free download that I'm going to supply the link in the description. It is to an action that creates all these luminosity masks for you automatically. So after you download it on your computer, come up here to actions and right here, see these bars, click on that and it says load actions. So here is where 
I downloaded it too. And if I say open, it's going to load my luminosity mask and it will probably be here at the bottom. So now I'm going to go over to channels and now I'm going to click on this create all luminosity masks. And here they all are. Once you're done with all your luminosity masks and you're done working on your image, click on delete all luminosity mask because if you don't and you save your file, it's going to just increase your file size and you don't really need these anymore. So if I say delete all luminosity masks, they're gone out of my channels panel. So I'm going to create all of them again. And so same as before, depending on what you want to do, if you want to work on your lights, you would click on them and see which areas that you want to affect in your image, what, what areas you want to select and work on. And sometimes this is trial and error where you may find that it's not working exactly how you want. You're not selecting the, the certain areas that you want. You can always choose another luminosity mask. So I'm going to kind of work on all these lights in this image. I'm going to kind of bring down the intensity of those highlights. So I'm going to go to lights two. And same as before, I'm going to command click on my luminosity mask for lights two. Click on RGB, go over to my layers panel, choose a curves adjustment layer and bring this down some just like that. And you can see it brought down some of those highlights. Now little added use of these luminosity mask. This time I'm going to use a hue and saturation adjustment layer. And what I want to do is reuse this mask that I had already used for my lights to luminosity mask. I'm going to hit alt or option and copy it up there to the hue and saturation adjustment layer. Click on my hue and saturation adjustment layer, bring up the properties and click on this colorize. Now I can change the hue and the saturation and the brightness here. Something like that. So here's the before and here's the after. You can see that I've changed the coloring of the, the lights and I've also changed the intensity of the highlights and brought that down too. So that's another way to use your luminosity mask. There's before and there's the after. So now to the question of the day. Do you think luminosity masks are easy to use? Let me know in the comments below. If this video was helpful, give it a like and don't forget to subscribe. If you want more short tutorials, see the ones above. And remember, it's never too late to learn. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.